sir. Who can tell me who the sergeant major is? Yes, sir, sir. Sergeant major. Uh... Oh, don't you don't me. know. You don't know. Right, let's hear from you then. Sergeant major Nicholson, watch guards. Nicholson, isn't it? Nicholson of the Welsh Guards. Well, you ought to know that by now, sir. Right. Leave to carry on, please. Carry on. One of the things about leadership is the maintenance of some kind of a mystique that the people who are being commanded don't completely understand something about the commander that they can't fully comprehend. And I think that this barrier of background and education provides this mystique. And the non-commissioned officers and other ranks know that they can't really surmount this barrier. Therefore, there's no feeling of trying to sort of emulate the officers because well, they, they can't, really. And I think they, they, they realise this. Sit up sharp, my boy. What have you done for Black and Idle? Uh, sir, I was in the accident in the gym, sir, <coughs> yesterday morning, sir. I see. How did it happen? Uh, well, sir, I went to pick some barbell. I was up to do doing exercise and uh, some, you know, accidentally dropped, <coughs> dropped on my head, sir. How many stitches you got? Uh, none, sir. Good. It wasn't bad enough, sir. It's well, funny as all that, is it? Stop. No, it's smiling. There's nothing to smile at. Sit up. Now, can you tell me how many battalions we have in the regiment? Two, sir. And where are they both stationed? One in the first battalion station at Caterham Barracks, Surrey, sir. And the second battalion station at Wuppertal, Germany. PFPO 46, sir. Well done. And it's B, F, not P, F. Right, can you tell me what the regimental motto is? On a sweet quomali your thoughts. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's exactly one version of it. Anybody say it's slightly better than that? Sir. All right, Trig, it's seven years. On Good. Well done, Trig. And I, I am adjutant here at Santos, but it is in my capacity, really, as a serving officer of the High Sea Brigade, that I act as a link with the regimental headquarters and help them in the selection of candidates and subsequently officers. Uh, for the High Sea Brigade. The system is, is a very straightforward one. There's no mystery to it. It has been suggested by many that it is an essential qualification before joining the High Sea Brigade that mu one must wear not only no school tie, but one of the accepted varieties of tie. This, I don't think, is true. He, he must not be an oddity when he joins. He must not be, we'll say, like a bean in a packet of peas or a bit of grit on a, a well-oiled machine. He must fit in. If uh, uh, an, an officer who joins any regiment, or any organization for that matter, is brilliantly clever, frightfully good, very ambitious, very successful, but for one reason or another he does not fit in, it simply is not going to work. For me to describe exactly what one is looking for, how one will detect a person who will not fit in, is very difficult to put into words. But I think one gets a feeling, perhaps. Now, would you like to just come up to a salute, please? Look at me. Hey, when did you come in? Tuesday, sir. Tuesday. Well, how are you settling in? I'm not settled in yet. Not yet, though. You haven't? Not yet, sir. Uh, where do you come from? Wigan, sir. Wigan. Good. Why did you join the Grenadiers? I thought I'd see a bit more laugh. What made you join the Grenadiers? I thought I could uh, better myself, sir. So I do know nothing about the regiment. Mm. At all? No, nothing at all? Not much, sir. Do you know how old it is? About 1800, then, sir. 1600. Well, how old did you say about? I would say about 1800, sir. About 1800? Yeah, sir. Hmm, well, you're not quite right. It's 1656 it was founded, so it's about 310 years old. Uh, what made you join the regiment? Best. You thought it was the best? For me, yeah. Sir. Who told you that? Nobody. Nobody? You've always thought so, have you? Sir. Good. It won't be the best if you don't start that noise rank, boy. Never mind you yet.
You've all been here eight weeks at the Guards Depot now, and you know how to polish your boots, and you know how to blank your belt. Now, I consider that you are up to the standard of an eight-week squad. I will therefore pass you. Personally, if it was left to me, I don't think you'd get a weekend on this morning's performance. It wasn't a good performance, and you've got a lot to learn yet, believe me. Now, before you get away on this weekend, think of one or two things. You're being allowed out of the guards depot on a weekend, and you're dressed as a Coldstream guardsman to the outside world. You want to act like one. Also, remember that when you get up to your hometown, surprisingly enough, the air at Purbright's very healthy. We don't get many sick people here, but suddenly when you get in your hometown, we get people going sick. There must be different air up there. And the other thing you want to do on leave is if you get hold of somebody who wants to come back and join the regiment, bring him back with you. We'll fit him up. We'll knit him in. Now, the other thing you've got to do is remember that if you're going to Newcastle and it takes six and a half hours to get there, it's obviously going to take six and a half hours to get back. Right, now get away, have a good weekend, have a good rest. Don't get too fat and idle. Too much of your mother's pudding. And don't drink too much either. Look at your front. Right, Sergeant Robertson, get him away. Come on, pick him up. Please. Look sharp, you don't look as though you want to go. Put your attention. Don't you left. Except the same I call out. By the right!